Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. When you think about everything that's driving what we do in engineering today, it all comes down to particle physics. The latest discovery in particle physics is the Higgs boson, and here to talk about it today is Dr. Sean Carroll. And Wally Rines from Mentor Graphics, who is a material scientist, is going to conduct this interview. So Dr. Carroll, why should we care about the Higgs boson? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. Why do we care, I think, is the, the question that I try most hard to get across the answer. And the short answer is because we all are curious about how nature works. You know, the Higgs boson is the missing piece of the puzzle that we've had for decades now, or even for millennia now, about the, the nature of stuff of which you and I are made, uh, the world that we immediately see around us. It's not something we understand because it leads to better electronics or medicine or economics. It's really just so important to how nature works. And we're curious, that's what makes us human. That's what makes us different than everybody else. We wanna know the answers. Well, the world's been looking for the Higgs boson for quite some time. How did they know they should be looking for it? It's, it's a weird story, right? Because it's all math in some sense. Uh, the Higgs boson was an idea that came out of the 1960s, like many ideas did. But this one came about because physicists had a puzzle. Why are the nuclear forces stuck inside the nucleus of an atom? Why don't they stretch out to the world that we observe in every day? And so many different ideas were proposed. Some physicists banged their heads against the wall. And the, a group of them independently, several of them proposed this far out sounding idea that there's a field, an invisible energy field pervading all of space that sort of absorbs and cuts off the lines of force from the weak nuclear force. And then, you know, it, it, it sounds very esoteric. And at the time, physicists thought it was esoteric. And it wasn't until a decade later that they realized, no, no, this is a really good idea. We should think about this. And they worked out, well, if this is true, what would the effects be? What, how would we know? We could make a new particle. That particle could decay in a certain way. We need a big particle accelerator to go look for it. And it wasn't until you know the late 2000s that we finally were able to do it. And is this the end of the puzzle? Do we now have the full picture of particle physics? It's a delicate question. We have the full picture of the physics underlying everyday stuff. So we have enough physics to describe tables and chairs, frogs and anteaters. We don't have enough physics to describe the universe. We know there's stuff called dark matter, stuff called dark energy, things called black holes and the Big Bang, the nature of space and time itself. So there's plenty of questions we don't know the answer to. Uh, there's a certain regime of stuff that we now understand. That's a very good thing. We should pat ourselves on the back. A thousand years from now, history books will record that in the year 2012, we found the Higgs boson, and that was a big deal. But there's plenty more to do after that. How much does it cost to build the kind of machine that was used to discover the Higgs boson? You know, it's not cheap. It was about roughly $9 billion to build the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, you know, that's not per year, $9 billion. That's over the course of, I don't know, maybe 20 years that it took. And it's ongoing. It still costs more because there's plenty of people working at it. But it's a, it's a very heartwarming story. Many different countries come together. Uh, it's built in Europe as part of a, a consortium, and the U.S. and Russia and Japan and China and other countries chip in to help build it. And it is a truly worldwide accomplishment, what we found. Do we know what to build next to discover the next set of things? And if so, who would fund it? We have a favorite thing we want to build next. We want to build what would be called the International Linear Collider. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider is kind of a big, messy machine that makes new things, and the Linear Collider would be a more precision instrument that studies their properties. Uh, so far, the Japanese government has shown the most interest in doing it. But there is a puzzle that I think you know, we can't uh, undersell, which is that we don't have a precise target right now. We know we have the Higgs boson, so that's something that the new machine will also study, but we would certainly like the Large Hadron Collider to find more particles for us. Right now, it's shut down. It's undergoing an upgrade. So it's gonna come back in 2015 at a higher energy than ever before. So we're very hopeful that the Large Hadron Collider is not done giving us new particles to study yet. Well, I certainly hope that we're part of what comes next, and we find out what, after the Higgs boson, will be the next great discovery in high energy physics. Thanks Thank for you, having Dr. me. Carroll.